Well, you folks at home can see the evidence. Snow and supposedly a few inches yet to fall here at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. Straight ahead, we pull the curtain on the postseason with an NFC wildcard matchup between the San Francisco 49ers and the Philadelphia Eagles. It's that most wonderful time of the year, the NFL playoffs, as we're underway on EA Sports. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. At their own 21-yard line. time with Tevin Coleman and he's got room and he's brought down after a very nice game a big run there 29 yards and a first we often poke a little fun at running backs past the age of 30 oh they're getting old they can't run anymore. what he's showing past the age of 30 you can still have some nice runs like that you certainly can and I think that we're starting to expand our definition of old running back because it used to be as soon as they hit 30, we want to get rid of these guys and go to the younger guys. But now that the guys are taking such great care of themselves, as you pointed out, you can still get explosive runs at any age. Right back to Coleman here on first down. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Second and nine at the 49-yard line. Set up to throw. Screenplay. McKenna. And some room to maneuver. The 20. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. It's a gain of 34. Big plays always wind up being a big theme as we get rolling these playoffs. And the defenses that can avoid giving them up. But they're the teams that tend to go far. You may not eliminate those big plays. But if you can limit them, then you've got a chance to get to the ultimate game. So after the big play, look at this, all the way down at the 15 now on first and 10. Now it's the fullback. This is Kyle Juszczyk. He will push his way down to about the 14. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That's someone who's pretty happy right there. That's the defense coordinator. Body after body getting to him before he can get started. Second and nine. And he fires one incomplete. Debo Samuel was the intended receiver. And it's third down. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Check. 
They'll run here with Coleman out of the gun. Man, this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. A three-yard loss. Fourth down now. Well, that kind of hit will certainly fire up your team, both on the field and on the sideline. Tackles for lost yardage, they're always welcome. And his kick is good. Not the touchdown they wanted, but hey, you're on the road in the playoffs. They did get three on the board. Yeah, it's a good opening drive, so you feel good about it yourself. You get to the sidelines. The defense feels good about you helping them right out of the gate. The team, yeah, they feel pretty good about coming in in the playoffs and getting points on the board right away. Take it in at the three. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. At their own 25-yard line. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now the first carry for Cam Akers. And this first play will get them back to the 25, but that's going to be it. The tackle by Eric Armstead. What an advantage having a lead guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. From the gun, it's Hurts. Hurts fumbles it. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And he will bring this one back. It's a fumble return for the 49er touchdown. Let's go. Let's go. So the big fella gets on the scoreboard with a return for a touchdown. Good thing he didn't have to go too far, though. You know the trainers were very happy about that. Imagine having to go get him in the end zone, escort him to the bench, and give him the oxygen. They were loving the fact that he got in without having to run very far. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This will be fielded inside the five. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Take over first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. And that last possession, really a gut punch. You seemingly had it working. You were in the midst of a very strong drive. Then suddenly the fumble, and you're watching the back of a defender's jersey as he brings it all the way in the other direction. There's not much more I can add to that. I thought... And now off to the races, down the right side. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Jalen Rager. 76 yards. And the Eagles are able to strike quickly for six. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts. All right, because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in Big Sky Country. He's being limited there. And he went. But I wasn't the one trying to chase him. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Their own 18-yard line. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns the run got four now they deal with a second and six there's Coleman oh he's got some breathing room and he's taken down right at the 45 yard line that one good for 33 and a first well they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football I first believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. So the big play moves them all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. Watch 
They'll set up a throw. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. They'll run for the first time with Jarek McKinnon. They'll get the first down and more inside the 20. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Get him inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line. Jordan Boyer. It's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down. I think that's the type of run we'll continue to see throughout this game. The snow coming down, I don't expect a lot of big plays to be broken. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. First and goal at the four yard line. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. On the screen, this is Coleman. And across the chalk into the end zone, it's a 49er touchdown. From four yards out. And the 49ers add on to their lead. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing? Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. That's a live ball scooped up by the offense. So after the block PAT, they're ready to kick this one off. Fielded just outside the goal line. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. At their own 21-yard line. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up. Whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook, one play drive is exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was really easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. And we'll see if it's that easy here. Now, second quarter action from Philadelphia, and it's the Eagles in possession as they Got it with a first and ten. Here's Akers. And he 
takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 36 yards on the play. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. This ball complete to Rager. And this defense rallies, and they stop him short of the first down right near the 24. It'll be a gain of eight, but it also lead to a fourth down. Eddie Pinheiro on now. The wind is at his back here in the second quarter. And this is not going to be anywhere close. No good. Way wide to the left. And this score will stay right where it is. These playoff games have a tendency to be tight. You have to wonder if that missed field goal could haunt them later. Yeah, we're always looking for the key plays, right? The ones that we're going to magnify. Usually those happen in the second half or later in the game. This might be the key play of the game showing up here in the first half. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. All right, I got to ask you, with these RPOs, essentially the quarterback has three options, right? So what's different from that versus the triple option that we see the service academies run at the college level? As a general rule, the triple option at the college level, most things are called outside of the quarterback faking it to the runner and then keeping it himself and maybe having a trail back. What I mean is, in the NFL, that option to throw the football all comes about organically. It's a natural deal based on reads. In college, if you're going to throw the football for triple option, you've actually called that play. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Good solid gain on first down. About what you'd expect from the big guy carrying the ball. Brings up second and seven at the Eagles' 40-yard line. fake they'll look to throw that's complete it's Brandon Ayuk touchdown 49ers Brandon Ayuk 40 yards and the 49ers had six to their lead and a nice job by him to catch the slant and then navigate and break free and receivers love slant routes because it gets the ball in their hands so quickly and oftentimes on the move and when they're on the move like that, then they get to use their best asset, which is usually their speed. And their speed sometimes, like this instance, can take them into the end zone. 
After the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They go play action with Hertz. He'll fire it deep for Rager. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Jarquiski Tart. And they will finally stop him, but a great return. Gets that football all the way down to the 16-yard line. Oh, and that's a nice job defensively to get a piece of the football. He's going to pop it into the air, and then it's the tip drill and good concentration by him to react to it and pull in the interception. They'll run with Coleman on first down. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and it'll bring up a second and 13. This is Coleman. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. It's a seven-yard pickup. They'll be looking now to third and six. Decided to hand it off that time on the run-pass option. Appeared to be an easy decision. Just gave it inside. Nice steady gain. They haven't made much of this great starting field position they had. Here's third and six. He'll look to throw. Gets this one to use check. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. That winds up being a four-yard loss and leads to fourth down. And his kick is right there. It's good. And that will extend their lead even further. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence Here and let him knock it through. At the 25-yard line, the Eagles take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The Eagles offense sent to begin their next drive. And this not an easy situation. You're down early, in the elements, you're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Play action. Here's Hurts. And the Niners get there and bring him down. For a rookie first rounder, he's made a huge impact on this defense, but that tells me that they had a plan for him when they drafted him. Just turn him loose, do what you do best, go get the quarterback. Throwing his hurts. Got a man and he hits him in stride. The 30, 20, 10, touchdown, Philadelphia. Eagle. A big play there. 84 yards. And the Eagles get a score closer. When they drew that up, I don't think they envisioned it ending in a house call, but he got it and took it all the way home. Really impressive run after the catch, wasn't it? That was, a, that was really special by him. But let's face it, in today's NFL, those tight ends are all 
and put more wide receivers, or maybe even sometimes bigger running backs. They just put them in a position to get a great matchup and make plays like that. Taking it about the one. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. At their own 23-yard line. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And thus far, the weather has not slowed this offense down one bit. They've looked good so far in the first half. They certainly have. And think back to our meeting with the head coach. And we asked him because we saw the forecast for this game, didn't we? He said, hey, have you prepared for this? And he talked about the different drills that they've done in adverse conditions, the wet ball drills, things of that nature. He said, I don't think it's going to slow us down much. We tend to handle it pretty well, and he's been right. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 31 yards. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Complete out to Samuel on the quick throw. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Complete to Debo Samuel. A gain of four. It's now second and six at the 42-yard line. the gun. It's a handoff to Coleman. He's got the first down here inside the 30. And finally, Mark down at the 23. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. First man through, it's the fullback use check. And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Brings up second and 11. Ball at the 24, and a second and 11. Now they hand off to Colbert. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. taken down short of the first right around the 15 yard line so instead of forcing the field goal it'll be first and goal yeah the force was trying to make something happen that just didn't need to right i mean the plays happen let it go it's over instead it creates a penalty from the shotgun he'll look to throw and he's gonna take it in touchdown san francisco tevin coleman with his second touchdown here in this first half and the niners are able to stretch their lead see it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide they forgot about him out of the backfield that's a really good point because you've got to communicate and oftentimes when you start counting receivers that's exactly what you do you start from the widest receiver work your way inside who gets lost sometimes the back in the backfield that's exactly what happened there and he got into the end zone fielded a couple yards into the end zone and not wanting to risk anything here late in the half he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25.
ready at the line. This Philly offense set to go. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. And let's pin the mirrors back and go full strength. Hurts. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And that'll be incomplete with 11 seconds remaining now. Incomplete from the contact. It's now second and 10. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Hey, Mike's 50, Mike's 50. I'm, I'm coming up to you. I'm coming up to you. Burt sets up to throw it. That's caught. It's John Hightower. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. At the 44-yard line. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. Here's Hurts to throw. He'll fire it deep for Rager. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Jarquiski Tart. So we come upon halftime here in this NFC wild card matchup as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! One of these two teams about to play their final half of the season as we're back at it in this NFC wild card bout. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. At their own 23-yard line. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. And in enemy territory last time through the interception, we'll see what they do on this drive. Can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more on the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? How much does that change what you do? I think it does depending on why the interception was thrown. Sometimes it's just a matter of the defense made a great play, so you continue to come back. But if it's on you, if the offense just doesn't have the confidence, if they're a little bit shaky, maybe try and take the pressure off and run the ball a little bit. And they'll set up the screen to Gurley. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Second and 11 at the 41. Off the play fake. Here's Hurts. They'll roll him out right. He's going to take off with it. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. They give him 10 that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And now a fumble. The ball's out. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And his guys are going to get the football at their own 47-yard line. Playing in snow brings so many other factors into the game. It's not just trying to take care of the ball. And we just saw there that that's difficult to do. But just trying to keep your feet and carry out your assignments and, and make sure you're comfortable while you're out there playing. Are you warm enough in your clothing? A million things going on. But the biggest one, hold on to the ball. Switch it, switch it, switch it, switch it. 
And the drive starts with a handoff to Coleman. And across the midfield, stripe into Eagle territory. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. They will run again with Coleman. And he's going to take this close to the first down marker as he stopped at the Eagles' 40-yard line. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. First down, San Francisco. here on first down. Flush to his right. He's going to take off with it. Oh, now he's stripped. He lost the football. And a little bit of good fortune there. He wasn't able to get it back, but he did have a teammate on the spot able to retain possession for them. The fumble on first down. Now here's second down. Ground, it's a handoff to Coleman. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. 11 yards there, first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. to throw now on first down. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Seven yards, the pick up there. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. On second down, it's Coleman, and he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. It's a game Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've run the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. Right back to him on first down. And across the chalk, into the end zone. It's a 49er touchdown. touchdown. Tevin Coleman saving his best for the playoffs with his third touchdown of the game. And the 49ers add on to their lead. Look, we all know that sometimes we see upsets in the wild card round. But I have to tell you, in this case... I did not see that coming. I don't think anyone in the stadium <laughs> saw it coming. You and I were coming in before the game. There was a couple in front of us talking about travel plans for next weekend. They might want to cancel those. Yeah, I would say so because right now it's looking more and more like they're going to be one and done. They're probably trying to call the hotel and make sure they get their security deposit back. At their own 34-yard line. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And last time, the turnover on the fumble. And they were in enemy territory. So that had Akers hit. He coughs it up. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And he will bring this one back. It's a fumble return for the 49er touchdown. So a great play there by the defense. If these guys are going to advance, and it looks like they will, this defense a big reason why. And they love carrying the mantle for this team, don't they? You see the way that they move around out there? They want to lead this team deeper into the playoffs and hopefully onto the Super Bowl. And that return for a touchdown certainly helps that cause. And this part of the game has been an adventure thus far, but this one is good. Eagles 14. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. 
Taken in at the three. A solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. At their own 32-yard line. The Eagles offense sent to begin their next drive. And let's just say they're going to be looking to start over on this drive. A few moments ago, they were in the exact situation, but their first play led to a fumble that was returned for six. Yeah, you definitely have to have a short memory to play in the NFL. you got to remember what you did wrong so you don't repeat it. But you can't dwell on it because then you will repeat it. And that's what you don't want to do. This pass into the hands of the running back, Todd Gurley. Three yards the game there, second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off at the 13. And a terrific return as he'll take it up past the 35. Well, so much of playing quarterback in the snow comes down to trying not to do too much. You've got to just keep telling yourself, throws downfield we've run every day in practice all year. But guess what? They suddenly become more difficult. And this one gets away from him and winds up an interception. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. They begin the drive with Coleman. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Coleman. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? They stay on the ground. Again, it's Coleman. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A gain of 13, it's a first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. So, first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second-half blowout material. went down near the 20 yard line just shy of the 20 first catch of this wild card game for a thousand yard receiver in the regular season he's got a first down too NFC wild card matchup. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Second and 11. Second and 11 now. Now we give right side Coleman. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations 
where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. The Niners on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and eight. They'll keep it on the ground. Coleman. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. A rough go there on third down, a loss of four. Four yards. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will make it into the end zone. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. 25 yard line. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And they are most likely steering at a cold end of their season here in this wild card round. Nothing has gone right so far. And they are, to be frank, in desperation mode now as they begin with a first and 10. Philadelphia picking up the first on a gain of 15. On first and 10, it's Hurts. He'll fire it deep for Rager. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off near the 34. And he's able to bring it up five yards shy of midfield to the 45-yard line. The utter domination here just continues. This defense, I don't know what more we can say all around about their performance. Well, it certainly feels in this game like maybe they're facing a Canadian defense. 12 guys on the field. <laughs> it feels like there's an extra on every snap because they have really struggled to make headway through the air. Xavier Howard up to make the tackle. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. They'll keep it on the ground. Coleman. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he gets this to the 48, but no further. Well short of the line to gain. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. So where did all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. This is taken at the 23. Officially, that'll be marked down as just a 28-yard punt. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. Saying their fans here are stunned would be an understatement. Things in this wild card round have not. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off at the 45. CD, this defense, I man. <laughs> At this rate, they're just having fun out there right now. And normally with this type of a lead, if you're a starter on defense, you're saying, hey, let the other guys play. But with this going on, no one wants to come out of the game. They all want their shot at picking off a pass. They'll run on first down. It's Coleman. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Brandon, this is clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Slam, slam. Jim, Jim, Jim. 
They'll keep it on the ground. Coleman. And he'll be brought down at about the 25 after a pickup of four. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run-pass option. You get the sense the next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? The Niners on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and ten. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. And it's picked up by the Eagles. And I do believe this is going to wind up a safety. It is. It's a safety. How about that for a wacky play? Things are just going from bad to worse now. It's a safety that does him in here. And that is one frustrated offensive unit. They can't get out from under their own shadow right now. I mean, I know this is the NFL, but could you imagine a college crowd right now? Imagine what they'd be doing. <laughs> they'd be chanting, start the bus, because they think this one is over. Quite a turn of events. This is first and goal from the three. It's Coleman here. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. And he's gone two and two on us now. At two receiving touchdowns, now his second rushing touchdown. And that's the back of the NFL nowadays, isn't it? The ability to do everything. You can't just be one or the other. The best ones, able to run it, catch it, and produce. Big time points put on the board by him. Extra point through the snowflakes, up and good. And that will extend this big lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. 23-yard line. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. Had one tell me once, you know, when we were having a tough patch, this too shall pass, this too shall pass. And finally we kept having a rough patch. He said, but you got to do something <laughs> to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. But first down, Hurts. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. So back-to-back -back incompletions and that has them staring at a third and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. He'll throw complete to Cam Akers. Well, oh, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. The screen does get him nine, but it also brings up a fourth down. 
Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Again, he'll drop the throw. And he's going to go down. Back near midfield at the 49. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. We've seen that the deep ball's been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it, unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Watch the run, watch the run. Mike, 53, 53, Mike, Mike. They're going to look to throw. They'll set up the screen here to Akers. Yeah, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. The defense shaking their heads, not aggressive enough, and they allow him to convert a third and 18. Now a desperation throw deep downfield and nearly picked it off. He had a chance to come down with that in the end zone, but it'll wind up just being incomplete. I usually hesitate when I say a guy's got world-class speed, but this guy might. So let's fire the starter's pistol. Let's go. If you've got him, you've got to try and use him. A lot of anticipation with the ball in the air, but no, incomplete. Second down, here's Hurts. Throwing right, and that's complete. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 12-yard line. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Jalen Rager was the intended receiver. And now it's second down. It leads to second and 10. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete. They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. They said beginning of the season they wanted to get past the wild card round. Well, they just got past the wild card round. How about that? Being able to put the big check marks up in the locker room, right? Get, you know, get to the wild card game. Check. Got that done. Win a wild card game. Big check. Now you've got to go ahead and set your sights higher. There is a bigger prize out there, and they still.